Hello everyone, I greet you in the name of God Almighty. My name is Apostle Newton Silas with the YouTube channel named the Lifestyle NNS. And today guys, I'm here with Nancy Grace. And then we have a very interesting topic to discuss with you. We says that Prophet Muhammad, the greatest man in the history, of course, is actually one of the greatest man in the history so guys if today happens to be the first time of you checking out my channel don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on my facebook and instagram and if you have any video you want me to react to don't forget to drop it at the comment section and i'm going to check it out so guys before we get down to the video i'm a theologian and i make this video not to discredit anyone's religion this is basically for educational purposes and i believe that at the end of this video i am going to learn you are going to learn few things from this um, video and I hope it will really help us. So let's stay back and enjoy this video. The greatest man in the history, Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him. Ya nafsu in lam kaffari la tadza'i A man by the name of Michael Hart, he said, and who was Michael Hart? Michael Hart was a contemporary historian and mathematician, and he gathered other historians and biographers together. And they said, let us compile a list of the hundred most profound human beings in history. And to make a long story short, they made a category. They set up 32 different categories by which to compare and produce these hundred most great profound human beings. And let me tell you what Michael Hart said. He said that Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he placed him at the head of his list. And those with him could not dispute it because categorically he earned that position. And Michael Hart said, I would have chosen, I would have liked to choose Jesus Christ because I'm a Christian. But there were several categories that honestly, I could not choose him because Jesus Christ was not a father. Muhammad, he was. Jesus Christ was not a husband. Muhammad, he was. Jesus Christ was not a statesman. Muhammad, he was. Jesus Christ was not a warrior. Muhammad, he was. And Jesus Christ was not a ruler. Muhammad, he was. And so Michael Hart and his other collaborators, they said, the greatest human being that has impacted history and all annals of documented history, it had to be Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that statement you will find You will find it in the archives of the Time magazine, of the New York Times, the magazine they put out, it's in their archives, you can read it. And in some of the bookstores here in Australia, other places, or you can go on the website and put in Michael Hart and you will get a website, put it into Google and you'll get it and you'll see the evidence there. But let me read to you what some others have said about Muhammad, the man, and his message. George Bernard Shaw said, if a man like Muhammad وسلم, were to assume the dictatorship and rulership of the modern world, he would succeed in solving its problems that would bring it much needed peace and happiness. Michael Hart said, my choice is Muhammad to lead the list of the world's most influential persons may surprise some readers and may be questioned by others 
but he was the only man in history who was supremely successful on both the religious and secular levels. And Castles Weekly said, in little more than a year, he was actually the spiritual, nominal, and temporal ruler of Medina with his hands on the lever that was to shake the world. Billions of Muslims all over the world throughout the last 1400 years have accepted the religious teachings of Muhammad and illiterate often brought up in the harsh desert climate of Arabia transformed a backward society into a great civilization. He was the only leader who realized his vision in his own life. He was born in Mecca as an orphan. He was raised in Mecca. He was driven out of Mecca. He was punished, had to flee. He was persecuted. His followers were killed. But Allah allowed him to come back 23 years later as a victor as a conqueror and when he came back he gave everyone amnesty he realized his vision and after that the prophet spread his message he spread islam throughout the peninsula of arabia so that islam became established as a state as a government he was the ruler but he was still eating and drinking and dressing the same way that he was doing as he was born and as he grew up. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He was just and he was fair. He didn't give to his family. He didn't distribute to his friends. He didn't make judgment for those who he liked and made judgments against those he didn't like like the kings, like the presidents, like the chairmans, like the rich people, like the judges of today and like those who have done it throughout history. This was a man in this world but always thinking about the hereafter because Allah sent to him the ayah Al-Akhiratu Khayrun Wa Abqa the Akhirah is better for you and for everyone else than what is present. His message was to call humanity to the worshipping of the Creator and to destroy all kinds of injustice in the earth and to establish a character, a paradigm of human conduct for the human beings to follow. If one reads the Quran, you will see on every page that message comes through on every single page. This is what sets Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, from any other ruler, any other prophet, messenger, individual. The Prophet wasalam, never in his life did he ever lift his hand to hit any human being ever not a servant not a wife not a child not a friend nor an enemy except when that enemy was opposing Allah and opposing the message and when the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to look for him on the battlefield they said Wallahi we found him in the middle of the enemies fighting and they said we used to seek the protection of his person we used to hide behind the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the battlefield he was such a warrior and statesman on the battlefield commanding and fighting for the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but once he was off the battlefield his eyes were downcast and he was speaking softly and he was gentle and he was warm and he was sacred and soft and caring and crying the Prophet was also during the course of that day 
feeding the poor, visiting the sick, discharging the army, acting as a statesman, acting as an arbiter, talking to the people, addressing the women, giving out the zakat, sewing his clothes, washing his house, shopping for the food, doing all the things that you and I do, and at night, standing in prayer for four or five hours at a time. And in the day, fighting the battles, discharging the armies, giving the ahkam and the rulings, explaining the Quran, instructing the people in behavior. How could a man do all of that? and stand four or five hours at night at one time. What kind of human being could that be? It was a messenger. It was a prophet. This was a man with a message. Oh, Muslims and non-Muslims. Muhammad, according to the Quran, he was a witness over the believers. He was no more than a messenger. He was a man dealing gently with all people. He was a great favor. He was sent with an irrefutable truth. He was that unlettered prophet. He was a mercy and a messenger. He was a mercy to mankind. He was a witness over the believers and the believers a witness over mankind. He was a mercy to the world. He was the best example to follow. He was the last prophet of mankind. He was sent to all the mankind and the jinn. He was victorious over all systems. And he was created on an exalted standard. Oh, Muslims and non-Muslims. There's not a person in the whole of history that can compare with Muhammad not a Confucius, not Guantama Buddha, not Alexander the Great, not Bonaparte Napoleon, not Julius Caesar, nor Constantine, not Mahatma, not Mahatma Gandhi, not King Richard or King Ferdinand, not Winston Churchill, not Charles Darwin, nor Deng Xiaoping, nor Karl Marx, not Albert Einstein, not Martin Luther or Martin Luther King Jr. Not George Washington, not John F. Kennedy, and certainly not Bill Clinton. Not Tony Blair, nor John Howard, nor George Bush Sr. or George Bush Jr. Not you, not me, not our parents, nor our grandparents, nor any of our ancestors can match this man Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To the non-Muslims, I say to you, go home and read about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tonight, if you dare, if you're not afraid of change. Because if you read about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with an open heart and an open mind, there's a chance that love for this man and respect for this man will come into your life, come into your heart, come into your mind, come into your family and your home. And you also may want to be a follower of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And if you should choose to do so, you will never elevate his name. You will never increase any blessings to his ummah, but you will benefit your own selves. And so we invite you to embrace, to understand, to respect that man Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his message. Hmm. That's a very beautiful um, video. He was able to tell a story about um, Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him. Of course, we know that Prophet Muhammad, while he was 
here or not he did a lot of incredible work he do a lot of works that no one in history just like how the video actually explained have done it or will even do it in years to come maybe probably in another generation but not from the generation that have passed and in our generation this video was able to expose us to some of the things and responsibilities mohammed did while he was still alive a video by Sheikh Khalid was able to uh, explain to us how Muhammad was a leader. He went on to talk about Muhammad being a statement, to be a mediator, to be able to you know, stand as a link, you understand, between two people. He also shows that Prophet Muhammad was not just, in a sense, um, the leader or the statement. Um, fighting, you understand, in the battle. He makes us to understand that he was also there teaching and actually interpreting, you understand, the Quran to the people for them to be able to understand. He went on to talk about Prophet Muhammad being a father, a husband, you know. Wow, that's just very, very interesting. Like, you know, not just understand him being a messenger or a prophet, like he has really, really done a lot. And the more I keep on, in a sense, reacting to this, you know, there's just something insights me from there i got to realize that yes this man was just a truly a prophet from god having looking at some of the life you understand he lived and some of the things he actually do from there you got to realize that this is truly a god messenger even though being a christian but i still believe in prophet muhammad i know he was a messenger he was a prophet sent by god and he end up becoming a blessing to humanity not just only to the muslims but also to the non-muslims he has actually been you understand a blessing to read he has been a blessing to read in the sense that you know when you look at the quran you know the quran contains a lot of mystery you know you can look at some few things that we are getting to discover it did right now then you got to realize that since 1400 in which the quran was actually revealed to the prophet you got to realize that all those things we are in the quran but it was we that are just getting to what knows about it like right now just like the way in one of the video that dr zach was kind of trying to explain um the sun and the moon and talking about the reflection of the uh, the moon is actually a reflection of the sun you see like before we always thought that in the stand the moon is a light of its own before before but just some few years from now which is like let's say 70 years from now that we got to realize that the sun the moon is actually a reflection of sun but this is something that has been in the quran for a very long time but how come we do not know about this so you got to realize that god find a way of kind of sending message to people maybe probably because we don't really read <laughs> because if maybe probably we kind of read very well then we could have known that these things has been there but then god find a way of sending all this message to um prophet muhammad now when you get to know about um the sun the moon and how everything come to stake the jewelry riches finances you know when you get to when all these things somebody is actually doing she is going to benefit everybody it's not going to say that when you create something in a sense meaningful that people are using you understand here and then it's benefiting everyone after you create it you don't say it's only for the muslim it's for everyone people are using it and people are interpreting it. so do you not see how the teachings of the prophet muhammad at the end of the day becomes a blessing just like the way we learned in some of our previous videos where he prophesied about the bedouins in the arabian in the desert of the arabians he was they were going to build tall buildings and do marvelous things and competing with each other you know those are the prophecies in a sense the prophecies 1400 years ago and all those things come to pass he talks about the falling down of the rome and everything come to pass so many things even in his presence when the rome in a sense fall everything has actually come to pass you got to realize that his teachings was actually a blessing that's why no one on earth can be compared to his one and aside from that um we learn in some of our videos that um um, God will give him opportunity to intercede that's at the judgment day just to add up here yeah, that's in according to what Islamic um, belief so guys this is the end of our video if you like our reaction you should like share and subscribe and if you have any video you want us to react to don't forget to drop it at the comment section and we're gonna check it out so guys remain blessed